Hey there, Real Classroom. Kristen Walter coming to you today, talking to you about the biggest reasons that real estate brokers will compete with their own agents. Stay tuned because at the end, I'm going to give you a couple of little tips and tricks on how you can not compete with your agents and make that transition. Hey, thanks for tuning in again today. Make sure you click that like button. Make sure you click the subscribe button. Share this with all your friends. I really do want to help you start your own real estate brokerage and stay successful if you already are your own broker. Okay, so let's get moving. A lot of you have called and texted and emailed and sent me messages about how you're afraid to make the leap to become a real estate agency owner or broker because you don't want to stop selling real estate and that's okay. You know, on this channel, I try to help you overcome all of your fears. And this is a huge fear and a healthy fear that a lot of you face because let's face it, real estate is awesome right now. A lot of us are still selling because that's where the money is. And it can be really scary to entrust some of your leads to your agents. So first, let's get into it. So why do most real estate brokers, when they're starting out or even mid-level or even when they're doing really great and have a lot of agents, them still compete with the agents in their company? Why are they still selling real estate? Well, a big thing that I see in a lot of real estate brokers, before they break through to the next side, before they break through to the next level. So like, let's say that you're a brand new real estate broker and you've got five agents underneath you and you still want to sell that real estate, but you want to get them moving on your leads or maybe give them more leads, the biggest thing, the reason that people aren't breaking through to the other side is because they're fearful to let it go. They're fearful that if they give the leads to the agents and the agents don't do well, then all of a sudden the customer isn't being served, the agent isn't making the money, and they're just fearful. They're just hanging on to those deals so tightly. You know, have you ever hung on to a deal so tightly that you killed it? Well, it's kind of the same concept. If you're so fearful about giving leads to the agents that are working for you, that you are squeezing them so tightly, you're going to kill it all. So that's a big reason that a lot of real estate brokers are still competing with their own agents. Don't worry, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you how to make that transition out of that fearful stage, but let's keep moving. So the reason that I still sell real estate and have agents who work with me is because I love it. I love selling. I love the negotiations. I love helping people. I love helping folks get into their new homes. I love going out and seeing houses. I just love the whole thing. You know, it's exciting and it's what I have done for many, many years. It's what I trained to do. So that's a big reason that a lot of brokers are still selling real estate is because simply they love it and they're great at it. And hey, there's nothing wrong with that. So the next reason that a lot of brokers are still competing with their own agents is because a lot of times our repeat and referral customers are requesting us specifically. And so if I have someone that's calling me that I've done business with time and time again, they know me, they like me, they trust me. I've walked them through all of their real estate transactions in the past. Of course, I'm still going to work with them. Why would I turn down that business if I don't have to? There is a way to transition yourself out, and I'll go into that a little bit later, so make sure you stay tuned. Okay, the next reason that brokers are still competing with their own agents is because they need that money until their real estate agents produce. So if you've got your goals set out, which you should, and if you don't, go take one of my classes, but if you've got your financial goals set and you know that you have to make a certain amount of money this year with a combination of real estate sales and your agents producing, if your agents aren't producing, you've got to produce. So that is a big reason that people are still selling real estate is because their agents haven't quite taken off the ground yet, or they're trying to meet a specific financial goal with a combination of their agent production and their real estate sales production. So the next reason that a lot of brokers are still selling real estate is because they want to maintain the production levels and the 
statistics and the qualifications for all of those designations and certifications. And as part of that, the reason they want to maintain those designations and certifications is because it gets us referrals. So it took me a long time to get my CRS. It took me a lot of money and effort and studying to get my RSPS. And in order to maintain those things, I feel like it's better for me to keep selling because if I get a referral from a CRS designee or I get a referral because of my RSPS or the SRS or the ABR, all the things, if I get a referral through those things, it's possible that the referring agent is going to ask me what my current production is. And so I want to be able to prove to them and to make them feel assured that I'm still in the business. I'm still doing deals myself. And that leads me to the next reason that real estate brokers, even if they have agents, are still selling real estate. But before I get to that, drop a comment below. Are you having issues as a real estate broker competing with your agents? Or are you an agent and not, and not understanding why your broker is still selling real estate? Do you feel like it's an unfair situation? Drop a comment below. Let me know what's going on. So the reason that a lot of us are still selling real estate is because in order to help our agents and train them, we want to stay in the game. Going through the process of a deal it helps us stay fresh. It helps us stay current. Sometimes there's little subtle nuances in the contract or there's something that'll happen in a negotiation or there's something that I'll learn about real estate properties in my area that I didn't know before just by going through the deal, just by going through the process. So it keeps me fresh. It keeps me competent, not just for the referrals, not just for the designations, but really just staying competent. And you know, a lot of times, the governmental agency that um, oversees you, so your state agency or your province, if you're in Canada or anywhere else in the world, they require you to continue production even if you are a real estate broker. So that's something that you have to consider as well. So now let's get to the juicy part. You know all the reasons now why we are competing. I say competing because sort of we compete, sort of we don't. You know, I have this uh, thing about... Uh, abundance. And, and I think that there's enough deals out there for everyone and that I'm going to attract a different type of person that you're going to attract who wants to work with me. And then you're going to get those people that want to work with you. But aside from abundance and aside from thinking that way, so how do you transition to not doing deals anymore and handing them off to the people that work for you. Because let's be realistic. If you're running a business, if you're running a real estate brokerage, the less that you can be in the customer service side of things, the better, because then you get to run your real estate business as a business. You get to manage your agents. You get to train them. You get to recruit more people. You get to you know, focus more on your agents than perhaps your client base on the real estate sales. So how do you do that? Well, the first thing I recommend that you do is that you co-broke or you work as a team with one of your agents. So for example, if you get a lead and it's a brand new lead, perhaps it's a lead that you don't really care about because they came to you off the internet. You can work that lead with one of the agents in your office. And then that way, you're training them on what you want them to do if you ever do give them a very important lead and you get to see how they work. And at the same time, they're gaining confidence and they're feeling more important and more a part of the company. So that's a really easy way. You can partner with any of your agents at any time. You can partner with all of your agents on all of your deals because that's the beauty of being a broker is that you can partner with anyone at any time you can even partner with someone who's outside of your company if you have to. So if you're a one woman shop and you don't have anyone to cover you while you're away, you go find another one woman shop. You go find another one person owned brokerage and partner with them on stuff. So partnering is a really great way to transition yourself and give confidence to your agents when they're working for you. Now, another thing that I do when I'm thinking about how to transition myself from selling to managing is at this point in my career, 
I am not servicing all the leads that come my way. It's physically impossible time-wise. It's the reason that I opened my brokerage so that I can have agents catch all the rain that I'm making. So what I have done as a policy for myself, it's not a policy that's written anywhere. It's not any agreement that I have with my agents because it's the way that I'm running my business right now. And I might change that later. But what I'm doing is I am taking my repeat referral customers and that's it. If it's an internet lead, I'm referring it to one of my agents. If it's a brand new lead of someone that I met on the street, I'm referring it to my agents. If it's a brand new lead that is not insisting that they work with me, then I'm referring it to one of my agents. That's the easiest way that you can transition yourself and give yourself more time to work the business, work on your brokerage, manage your agents, is to refer those leads to your agents. Now, don't ask me about splits. Don't ask me about cuts. Don't ask me about referral fees. You have to set your business up the way that you want. If you want to give those leads to your agents as part of your value proposition, then go for it. If you want to charge your agents for those leads because you're paying for them on the internet, then go for it. But just think about the concept and think again about what that value would be is if you are a broker and you tell one of your agents that you want to give them a lead and they run with it and they close it, think about how much that frees you up to doing the next thing that I'm gonna tell you about that's going to be so powerful. I've talked about it in all my classes. I talk about it all the time in these videos and I'm hoping that you're catching what I'm throwing down on this because I'm trying to get you to think like a business owner. You need to be focusing on business to business contracts. You need to be reaching out to the relocation companies the corporations, the people that are going to give you a high volume of listings or buyers so that you are the figurehead when you're talking with that business owner and you're saying, I have a small brokerage or I have a brokerage with a fantastic team of agents. We would love to be able to help you and your company with everyone that's moving to our area, find a new home or list their current home. And when you get those leads, you hand them off to your agents so that let's say, for example, you go out for a big contract with a military relocation company or Coca-Cola or anywhere on uh, the human rights campaign.org corporate equality index. I mean, that's a great place to start so that you know that those companies are open-minded and diverse and looking to you know, uh, treat their employees well. HRC.org, Corporate Equality Index. I'll drop the link below. Start there when you're cold calling. Getting into a company as a relocation specialist for your area could possibly get you 200 deals a year. 200 deals a year. You cannot physically do those all by yourself. And those businesses understand a business model and know that they're not going to get you as the broker on every deal. They're going to get your agents. So when you're competing with your real estate agents and you're thinking about how to scrap it out for those internet leads or you're, you're thinking like in a, in a scarcity mindset, I need you to try to think more abundantly. Because the more that you're trying to compete for those little tiny deals here and there, the one-offs, the internet leads, you know, maybe someone that you sort of know or that you met at a party, you're not maintaining enough space for yourself to go out and get the new business that's huge for your company. So the other advice I can give you, the last little piece before I go, is that you can always cherry pick your deals. I've seen old brokers who have 300 agents that work for them that still take a deal here and there that are awesome, sweet, fast, happy, great money. There's nothing wrong with doing that because if you're trying to stay competent, trying to stay in the game, trying to keep people happy and you get a referral for a luxury listing in your market, you need to take that referral and do that. If that's what you want to do, if you explain it to your agents. Now, listen, I see a lot of real estate broker owners who don't compete with their agents. Talk about a huge value proposition. 
If I know that I'm coming to work for you as a new real estate agent and that you're my managing broker and you've always got my back and you're not going to be going out for the same listing as me or you're not going to be taking your buyer to the same listing as I'm taking my buyer, that's huge for me. So consider that and consider how much it frees you up to be in that business owner role, that business owner mentality, and not the customer service mentality. Consider that that frees you up to not be worried about all of the things that happen in the contract with the clients and dual agency matters. I haven't even gotten into that, like, and I'm not going to get into that because as a real estate broker, we do have to worry about competing with our agents because of the state laws when it comes to possibly working you know both sides of the deal so if i'm the listing agent and one of the people in my office is the buyer's agent on the same deal we have to be very careful about how we're doing things in the in-house brokerage so just a little bit on why brokers compete with their own agents the top reasons and i gave you some really juicy tidbits on how to get out of that little rat race of being a real estate agent and getting your mindset into a business owner as a broker owner. I almost forgot. If you want to see a really cool example of how a team works when it comes to handling buyers and listings and a small brokerage, there's a great new show on Netflix called The Agency. And it's a luxury boutique real estate agency owned by a family in France. So be ready. You're going to have to read some subtitles, but it's only six episodes. And I love the way that they go out for listings together, that they handle buyers together. They really are a cohesive unit and it works because they're a family, but there's no reason that you can't do that as well in your brokerage. If that's the team approach that you want to take with competing with your own agents. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.